We gonna be here all day. We gonna be here all day, baby. I like this kind of party. Welcome back to the way back. I'm Ryan Sickler, RyanSickler.com, and Ryan Sickler on all your social media. Very excited to have my guest here on the way back, ladies and gentlemen. Ari Shafir, Thank welcome you. to the way Thank back. Thank you. Give me one. He's giving my. <laughs> yeah, remember how excited you were? All, dude. Remember how excited you were? They do it for you. If too, they gave on, you one, come on. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all the fucking truckers. Yeah, that's when you weren't like shooting a bird at somebody. We do that every now and then. They pull up on the side. My dad's like, "What are y'all doing back there? What, fl- flipping somebody off? Yeah, you rebel up, punks. And they pull us all back up there. Punks. I figured you'd be the first person that would moon on this fucking podcast. <laughs> People was used to moon the out of those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I never. No, we weren't those kids like that. We were nice right, well, I want to ask you. This is what I want to ask you first. So, well, well you said you actually. Because you are old enough. You yeah. sat in one of oh, these. Oh, so huh? many, dude. The carpool. So you, got, you want the back. Did your um, family own now. a wagon? No. I would, too. I think I would, too, get, get sick. sick. Going I can't sit on a train like a train that. I got to ride the way I'm Why moving. do they even have those yeah. on the train? Yeah. I can't do that on a train. Yeah, the Gorlins had one. You'd the sit who? in the back. What the Gorlins. The Gorlins. Yeah, and then they had two types. The ones that flipped down yep. and the ones mostly that opened up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And you get that back. It was so dangerous. Yep. You get rear-ended. Those kids are dead. Oh, dead. No seatbelts, <laughs> no, no seat, nothing. Yeah, slam, that's slam this, smash. That's what this seat's all about right here. <laughs> oh, yeah, you don't have seatbelts. It's so funny because um, I love the seat, but who was it, Kirsten, that said, um, was it Florentine maybe, that the better you were behaved, the closer you got to sit to the front. And he said he never got past the middle <laughs> seat. <laughs> yeah. We used to fight in the back seat so much. My parents would we would we would uh, we would do this thing where we'd mess with each other. We'd be like, you know, you'd tap tap, hit hit hit, and then your parents were like, stop, it's done. And then you'd be like, I got you last. <laughs> They'd be like, stop it. Or and you'd be like, sh- just I'm not touching yeah, I'm you. Not, I'm you not, not touching you. But it was like, I got you last. And we had a song for it, like, I got you last, I got you last, I got you last. And then uh and then they'd be like, You cut it out back there. And then be like, okay, fine. Like, Y M C A Y M C A Y. But they knew, like, she's throwing it. I'm like, it's just a hit song. I can't sing a, hit, just song a hit song of the era. And they'd be so mad. Here, you know what? This is what I want to ask you because I know you as a person, yeah. as an adult person. You've created a show called Amazing Race. Oh, yeah. You have. I was going to say you were on that, but you're on a different show. I was on a different yeah. yeah. You have pulled your hemorrhoid Kleenexes out on podcasts. You've yeah. wiped microphones up your ass. You've dropped your friends in front of their kids. You've yeah. Not in front of their kids. Shots. The kids are safely inside. <laughs> <laughs> taking shots at Kobe. Kids were none the wiser. <laughs> what was, did, were you a fucking practical joker growing up or was this all later? Like, I think what, it was all waiting. Like the amount of okay. like What's your origin story? Like where does that in I'm the same as Bane. you come from? <laughs> no, I'm just like, I was just a well-to-do kid. I was a joker in like, in like grade school and like stuff. Like you weren't One of the funnier practical ones. joking people. You're just being funny person. Just jokes, but you weren't, yeah. You weren't doing any wild shit. Yeah, and I was just like, same with with girls. Like, once I started having sex, 23, I was just a slut for a while. Make up for lost time. Oh, yeah, you lost a lot of time. Yeah, girls and drugs. It was like, let's catch up. But it was like way later. And somebody's like, do you think it's that because you're so repressed? I'm like, probably. Yeah, I didn't get into any of that stuff. Orthodox Jewish upbringing. Right. And so tell me about your school, because I highly doubt there's going to be many guests that sit Maybe here with not. an Orthodox Jewish Maybe upbringing. Maybe not. So was it all boys' school, or was it mixed schools? Uh, the religious classes were boys, and then the girls would do their own. Um, um, we were a mixed high school. So you would just separate for those yeah. classes? Yeah, Yeshiva High was uh, all boys, and then they had a girls' depart, like another school, another place. Yeah, in Maryland, in Silver Spring. And I you were allowed you to wear ago. shorts up until fourth grade, and they're like, "That's it for that." And then you had to wear a collared shirt, long pants. If you wore just a sweater, you like got to have a collar under that. Really? Some guys would be like rebels, and they'd like tape <laughs> an old collar underneath it. Oh, like, like a look dicky. at me, like breaking, a dicky. <laughs> uh, breaking the system, dude. <laughs> Rebel without a cause. Well, so tell me about these kids, because look, this seems like very strict. It seems obviously it's orthodox so but kids are kids kids are kids kids are kids so what do you we guys didn't know it was strict off? we had no idea okay, it was strict fair i enough. saw coolio on the old john stewart show before the daily show he had a upn the MTV show. show no upn oh wow do you remember that one uh-uh, i remember the mtv you remember one it? it was the john stewart show and i went to a taping of it i'll never forgive my buddy for this 
Avi went to a taping. They shot a fucking cannon, or at least threw a shot. I don't remember how they got it. A rolled up John Stewart shirt, and I was like, looked it right in my hand. And the last second, goes, nope. And he just grabbed oh, it. Oh, he got it. I'm so fucking mad. He's not. He doesn't even have style. I would have rocked it so well. But he had Coolio on, and he goes, it must have been tough having to deal with drive bys. Stuff like that. People may be shooting you, trying to inundate you into a gang. And he goes, Coolio goes, no, nah, man, it was just, as a kid, your level's your level. So what, in my world, a drive-by took the same place as your world where a bully took your lunch money. It Got was the it. same level of danger. Right. So it was that. We had a blast. We had our friends. We'd, we'd do whatever we thought. was. We didn't think we were missing or anything. You know, so yeah, we never touched women. And kissed women, but well, I asked you about high school dances, and you said no, that wasn't even allowed at your school. So we had a couple. Okay, some of the l more lax parents, no alcohol. I mean, no alcohol. Well, your kids, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> even even at 16, 17, 18, like those oh, sneak shit. Okay. No, it wasn't even a thought. It, okay, no one had even seen weed. I was like, we heard of it. My sister went to a Pink Floyd show when I was like in sixth grade, she was in eighth. She goes, you could smell marijuana, I'm telling you, you could smell it, it was there. It was there. Yeah. <laughs> it was there. Yeah, it sure as fuck was. I was like, no way, what do you mean? Where would they do it? I remember my first concert ever. <laughs> You're in Maryland, bro. <laughs> yeah. uh, Meriwether Post Pavilion Meriwether Post Pavilion, yeah. I'm seventh grade, my buddy Jason Danilowski, he Damn, was the kid great. in our class that was allowed to cuss in front of his parents. Dude, my face too. First time he was like, that's bullshit, dad. We were like, oh, you about to get fucked up. He was allowed to say whatever he wanted to as long as it wasn't fuck. Wow. So his brother introduces us to Metallica. And now Metallica is coming to open for Ozzy at Meriwether Post Pavilion. It was the Ultimate Sin Tour 1987. Metallica's on the Master of Puppets tour. They're still young kids. Wow. They're about to blow up. Right. And I get to see Cliff Burton before he dies. This is weeks before he passes away. So his parents were down. He's like, you guys got to go. And me and my brother are like, can we go? And my parents are like, fuck no. And then his dad calls and they talk. And he's like, look, I'm going to drive them there. I'm going to drop them off at the gate. They're going to go into their assigned seats. And I'm going to wait there. He's at Columbia Mall. He's like, I'm going to come. They'll come right back to the car. And my parents agree. So our first concert is Ozzy Osbourne, Metallica's opening, Cliff Burton. James Hetfield is, has a broken arm from skateboarding. Wow. So the guitar text. That's how young these guys still are. Damn. I just know him as his old man battling Napster. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's right. There it is. It was at 86. There you go. 1986, August 2nd. Yep. That's a, a month and a half later. There you go. Wow. We got to see him right before that. What did he die of? They had a, Drugs. they had a, no, no, they had a bus crash. It rolled over. And there's a whole story about like James Hetfield, like almost like that La Bamba shit. And he didn't want to sleep near a window because his throat, he needed to protect his throat to sing. So Cliff said, I will. And then they hit like some black ice, but the wow. bus rolled and he fell out. And then the, the oh. bus fell on him and crushed him. Violent he was 24 years old. Wow. Yeah. All this to say that my first time seeing, smelling, touching marijuana. Because my, my parents were like, someone's got to stick a needle in you. And I'm like, even then, I was like, no one's going to waste gonna stick their a drugs. Needle in That's what you. they would well, Yeah, what the fuck are you talking about? Like my that. mom was like, you can't go to rap concerts. You got trampled. That blue row right here. This is like our seats. This last row wow. right here. And on my right, we start to smell weed. And we're like, oh, my God. We're terrified. We're oh in seventh God. grade. It's so and it's rebellious. coming down the row. Oh, they're, they're passing it? They're passing a joint the whole way. And it comes yeah. to me. And I just grabbed that <laughs> motherfucker, passed it to my brother. He passed it to Dan Oski, and on it kept going. Can I, scared to so death. scared. Can I even talk? Will it come through to my hand? Die, Can it soak so in? Like, Am I gonna get high from touching? I heard there's uh, Jimmy Hendrix would get high during shows. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Oh Can my I god. tell you? You knew then what some fucking dorks don't know now. When they're passing around, and it comes to you, you go, no thanks. Just pass it. Just pass it. You don't have to smoke. Nobody gives a <laughs> shit if you're smoking. That's right. The guy on your left needs it. <laughs> Just uh, let me facilitate. Yep. Just fucking idiots. Terrified touching it. Like, wow. Oh, wow. Guys. Mine was Constitution Hall Eurythmics with my sister. And you saw it? No, I didn't. It. No, I Smell just made my first it. concert. I don't think there was any there. I remember the smell is sweet smell. leaf. It's such a sweet smell in the air. I love so it. So specific. The first time I smelled crack was in Winnipeg. 
And I was like, who's burning candy? <laughs> yeah, what's going on? <laughs> um, but, but I also asked you, so you said you had a couple dances, but I asked you, were you ever invited by a girl from another school where you could go yeah, there? So, so JDS was like the less religious school. Okay. I eventually switched there in 11th grade. I wanted to change. Even then, my rebellious attitude was like, I want to move around. That's the same reason I went from LA to New York, and I'll go from New York onwards. You know, It's like, I, I just want new experiences, and I wanted this new, oh, what's it like at JDS? Um, but there was a girl that was on my block, uh, Jenny from the block, actually. <laughs> Her name was Jenny. But uh, so she came to one of the, the Hebrew Academy dance parties, and we'd occasionally dance with the more lax parents, but, but you had to go like this. You hold them high waist this far, and then they put their, their arms on you, on and your there's, shoulders. There's clear distance Lots of in between distance. you. And then it was like so every once in a while it would be a slow song. You're like, oh, wow, can I get a girl to so Jenny had this crush on her, and I was like, do you want to slow dance? You know, slow song. Do you want? She goes, sure, yeah. She's used to these fucking JDS dances. So I go to this, and she comes right in and gives me the, the this. Oh. And I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> she must have felt my two-inch dick into three inches. I mean, I mean, I was never, and I was just like, don't fuck it up, don't fuck it up. And it was just like, wow, and you put your arms around her, and it was like, is this what dancing's like? Is this what adulthood is like? I got to switch to JDS. It was, that was probably sixth or seventh grade, it got in my head. It was wild. Later, JDS, those girls as adults were bad kids. <laughs> bad kids. Yeah, they smoked weed, they drank. Um, they had a, I was in the other room. They had a Spanish sword fight. What the hell's that? I don't know this one. It's dicks, obviously, but what's a Spanish sword fight? What do you do with this one? Three girls. Three guys are sitting next to each other. Three girls are having a contest to see who can get their guy off first. That's a Spanish sword fight? I guess so. <laughs> I mean, you it's the first and last time sure. I heard of it, to be honest. I never really researched if this is a real thing. I'll be honest with you, I don't know. But that's what they called it. I was in the other room watching Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> I was like, wait, you guys did what? Like, you know, whatever it happens. I'm like, that doesn't just happen. That doesn't just happen. I never had any of that wild shit. Like, I hear these guys out here on the West Coast telling me the shit they were doing in seventh grade. I'm like, we weren't doing anything like that. High school was like, man, if you touched a girl's boob over her sweater, over the sweater, you were you over were the moon. Yeah. You were like, what? That like kissing, you have your hand here and like, oh. I'll go to the belly or I'll go to the the the, the um, waist. But you, instead of going like that, you're like, let me try it. And you just whip by. <laughs> and if they don't like revolt, you're like, I think they might want to do back. And they're like, I'll go back to next. You whip by again. And they're like, I think I'm in. And they're like, wow. A girl's Feel perfume. It. Did you wear a cologne? Were you yeah, a cologne Yeah, Noir. Yeah, what for real. Mm -hmm. I did. I never did. I saw probably one commercial and I was hooked. I did a Dracar for 10 seconds and then a girlfriend gave me Obsession by Calvin Klein. Interesting. Polo Obsession. was a big one. Everyone Calvin wore Klein. Polo. Obsession. Yeah. And, um, and Cool Water? Cool Water. Obsession. That was like, yeah, there's that Obsession. oval bottle. Wow. And then um, Tuscany. I wore Tuscany for a second. Do you too. still wear cologne? No. no. I, I'm, Who I'm would? Deodor Who I haven't worn fuck cologne would? since this shit right here. I gave up deodorant for These like six days. months this year. Um, Dracar. Let's see that Dracar bottle. The black bottle, black right? Bottle. There it is. There it is. There yeah. it is. That old Damn. black A couple bottle. spritzes and one on the walkthrough, like Sebastian says. Yeah. <laughs> A couple of the neck, one on the walkthrough. Is that Sebastian or Brett Ernst? I, I forget. Either yeah. one of them, it could be. Yeah, maybe Brett. Um, and then the girls would tell me, put it on your pulse. Yeah, where the like pulses this. and it'll emanate. It's for out pheromones. There. Yeah. Polo was big. It was like the original old one, the green one. Yeah, that thing right there. Yeah. Everybody had that. Brew by Fabergé. Uh, did uh, did Old Spice have Eddie Murphy's joke. You gave your dad brute free. He's like, brute. By Fabergé, yeah. you cheap motherfucker. Who the fuck's Fabergé? <laughs> Why do you have to say by Fabergé? Yeah, that's what the whole thing was. It's like promoted by. It's like Live Nation. <laughs> it's the Live time Nation I hear of Cologne. Brute by Fabergé. You still have those songs stuck in your head from back then? I have um, stuck on band. I'm stuck on band aids because band, band aids stuck, stuck on me. me. Yep. We are Flintstone kids, All the 10, thousand strong That's and right. growing, or whatever. That's 10 right. Million strong That's and growing. right. Ten million strong and growing. You know what songs in my head from back then? What? And I think it was just Maryland. June re means fight for life. Nobody <laughs> bother me. Dude, nobody <laughs> bother me either. Yes, <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> you got to look that up. See if you can find that old commercial. Oh, my God. It's like J-U-N. That's it. Oh, that's it. Dude, I... <laughs> you finished it. You're I like, have not thought of that, and it's still in there. It's, it'll never it's leave. still in there. I, I haven't you off. thought of that commercial for decades. You're training little still, kids. This guy was fighting fucking ninjas in, in Saigon. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, he taught seven-year-olds how to look fight. Look at this. Look at him. When you take Cut. self defense, then you too can say, Nobody bothers me. Get him, lady. Nobody bothers me. That's right, dude. 1,000. That was the number. And jury meets fight for right. <laughs> Terrible editing. <laughs> Dude, I forgot about that commercial. Oh, you can tell they already rolled the film. Like, say it, say it, out, say it, out, kid. Say it, say it. Say it. Um, all right, let, let me see if you remember this guy, Captain Chesapeake. Did you ever have? Did you remember this dude? Captain Chesapeake. Yeah, Captain Chesapeake was big in Maryland. He was the captain. He had like a morning TV. He was like a Mister Rogers. There he is. And yeah, and the, that's the guy Moby the Sea Monster yep. back there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Captain Chesapeake. Wow. Look how long he had to run from 71 to 90. Ahoy, crew members. What? There he is right there. Yeah. Wow. What Captain happened to Captain Chesapeake? Chesapeake? I don't know what happened to Captain Chesapeake. Okay, so I, I've told this story before. I know another one. You'll but... know this one, too. So back when Atari came out, mm -hmm. right, it first came out. I remember Everyone that. Everyone in one. I remember that. You had Atari. a joystick and a button. Dude, my buddy pulled Frog this, or Pitfall. The, he pulled it out? No, he pulled the suction cup or the grip off the controller and put it on his forehead. And just as a joke, when he took it off, he had a fucking hickey. He had to wear <laughs> Band-Aids <laughs> to cover it. He, yeah, this is <laughs> it. That's it. Came in one. Atari 2600. It was the best. It so, changed everybody's life. It was, some people had Coleco, and you're like, you're yeah, a dork. Yeah. This, this was before, yes. This was it yeah. right here. When this came out, you had Pitfall, Donkey Kong, River Donkey Raid, Pac-Man, all of them, right? Yeah. Um, one button. It was shoot one and button. move. And you would slam We wanted thing. one so bad, my dad was like, we can't afford that or whatever. Game so, reset. So this guy what a is doing a contest on WD. Now, we're in we're in Maryland, so we're, we got the Baltimore channels and the D.C. channels. Okay. He's That's right. D.C., and they're doing a contest. That's the dude. Dick Diesel. And they're giving away an Atari. Right? And we're like, yeah. what? And every, <laughs> like, it might have been one, once a week, he would come on, they'd have a wheel, and they'd spin it. And you had to submit a postcard that had your name, address, phone number, and your favorite show. Right? And the show ranges were like, Scooby-Doo, The Jeffersons, Good Time, San Francisco. We're watching all that shit back in the day. So we, me and my two brothers sit down, and we submit hundreds of them. We're writing <laughs> Scooby-Doo. We're just submit the fuck out yeah, of Yeah, just things. overload the system. And one night, it's like a Wednesday night, we're all, everyone, in elementary school, we're in like third grade, everyone is dialed in because everyone's submitting for this thing. We all want Atari. And they're like, all right, we're pulling our next contestant. And they pull it out, and they're like, Derek Sickler. And we're like, what? No, no. And we are jumping up and down like, fuck yeah, fuck yeah. We got a shot at Atari. Derek Sickler of Eldersburg, Maryland. So he spins the wheel, and he's like, Scooby-Doo is his favorite show. Dude spins the fucking wheel, and the ball's bouncing and bouncing and bouncing, and it goes right to Scooby-Doo, and then it goes <laughs> right next to Scooby-Doo, and we fucking lose. And I'm like, oh. Damn. Next day we go to school. My brother's a goddamn celebrity. Because he got called. Yeah, yeah they were like, all, everyone's watching. You know? Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're like, we're going to send you a T-shirt as a consolation prize. Like, I seriously, like six months later, that fucking T-shirt showed up. <laughs> My dad felt so bad. Like, we were so gutted that he went and got the damn Atari. Really? Yeah, he did. He, could, he, could, he couldn't bear seeing it. That That's Atari like, was we huge. We were devastated, dude. That Atari devastated. was huge. Oh, wait, you said you remembered a car commercial or a commercial. You said I remember yeah, another one. Yeah, it's not right for this good feel-good <laughs> podcast. Is it a dead one? Is it a seven? It was for Down Syndrome stuff. <laughs> 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 Here's one. So, um, let your fingers do the walking. Let your fingers do the walking. Yeah, yeah. Remember that? I let remember your fingers that. do the walking. Uh huh. So we had a red Volkswagen Beetle at the time. It was beat up from the '70s. So the yellow pages. They did a whole ad campaign where you could paint your car. They would paint your car 
Yellow? Pick, pick your color. No. Nope. Okay. We went blue. And you had to put their logo on like the hood and the doors and the trunk for like a year or six months. <laughs> and then they're going to peel that off and you get a new paint job. That was the ad thing they did. Well, my parents did this shit. <laughs> for Dude, what? Because we had no money and they right. wanted a new paint job. They peel that shit off. You could clearly see the outline. Oh, of, you know no, what I mean? It yeah. was horrible. Oh, no. It was horrible, dude. And every now and then on the freeway, we'd be like, there goes one. You know, there's not <laughs> many of them out there, bro. Not <laughs> many of them out there. <laughs> so we have this shitty Volkswagen, and my mom enters a contest. It was the um, WPOC Plays It Country, 93.1, I think they were. WPOC Plays It Country. We would never listen to right? country music then. We didn't either, but my mom did because she was sleeping with a dude that listened to country music, cheating on my dad. Grew up so She's different watching. Than me. So um, she enters this radio contest where they are taking 99, 99 WPOC, 99 contestants to um, the Inner Harbor, and they're going to have a brand new Dodge Chrysler Laser, and the window is going to be down on the driver's side, and they have to get, I don't know how many feet, but I don't know if they did like 99 feet or what, but you had to throw a football into the window of the car, and if you did, you'd win the fucking car. Whoa. And we're like, all you we do is play sports. We're so fucking, we're, and my mom doesn't ever fucking consult us talk to us nothing nothing we're like are you practicing are you fucking practicing during the day she's like no yeah, way she's gonna I'm, do it. I'm like on your lunch break go out in that park go and out you little george's like, a, like this thing the girls do where they shift their yeah, whole just body shot put it yeah so we're down there it's dark it's the inner harbors a whole thing's going on the, the radio harbor, thing 99 yeah. people are lined up and i'm telling you i don't remember but we're in the back back chunk where it might be in the 80s yeah but there's this one fucking dude. I still remember this guy. Good looking dude. He's over on the side the whole time. He's throwing with his buddy the whole time. Practicing. Getting Practicing warmed up. the whole time. No one makes it. Now, if we go through all 99 people, they reset it again, and you get to go Is again. Is this car moving? Nope. Sitting still, bro. Wow. Sitting fucking still. So here comes my mom. Nobody's won yet. My mom throws this fucking ball. It goes like five fucking feet, bro. <laughs> It's the microcosm of everything. <laughs> it just goes, kr, kr, kr. we're like, are you fucking kidding? Like, we're kids looking at our mom going, are you fucking kidding me right now? <laughs> and who's behind us? Fucking Johnny U over here has been practicing. And what does Johnny U do? Right in the fucking window, bro. Zips it. So now uh, mom's out. You uh, know what I'm saying? But the other people behind could still tie it and go for it. second round. Nobody does. You know what Johnny U does after he throws it in the window? What? Goes right off to the fucking side. And continues to throw. In case. In case. Wow. Homeboy stayed fucking ready. And we went back home in that goddamn Yellow Pages he Volkswagen. He taught you a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> he taught you a valuable lesson. He did. I was like, that Stay guy. Sharp. I'm like, do you see this guy? Stay sharp. This Go is through our competition. This yeah. <laughs> Bob, be like him. Tell me um, tell me about baseball cards. Yeah, I'd get them all the time. We, all my friends, we, we, we had them. My my gems were a George Brett rookie card that I stole from my friend. Okay, I was going to say, you brother. opened that? Nope. It was on, he was counting all the stuff I stole it from him. Still kind of regret it, but also not so much. Um, And then Frank Thomas I got way into. Early big Frank hurt? Thomas, the big hurt. Yeah. I had all his rookie cards. What a cards. nickname, too. The big hurt, and he'd put that hurt Pete's on you. fucking did, dude. That dude God, he was, bitch. I remember I, uh, I was working at a Woodmont Country Club. I was like 16. And there was a Mike Mussina was pitching for the Orioles, and he pitched a one hitter, yep. and they lost one nothing on a home run to Frank Thomas. And he also pitched one against Cleveland, where Sandy Alomar broke it up in like the ninth. And he four no a uh, one hitters four one hitters. He was that fucking close to wow. four no hitters. Mike Mussina. Did he ever throw a perfect game? Go up there. I don't think he did. I don't think he ever got a no hitter or a perfect game. Two Came outs of a perfect game and one out. That was the one, and I think wow. that Sandy Alomar got the base hit and ruined it. That's wow. how good he. People don't realize, dude. Four one hits. That's crazy. Wow. Oh, that's he's a crazy. Hall of Fame. He deserves it. Yeah, no doubt he deserves Damn. it. Damn. Damn. Yeah, we had all these cards. You were just Were like, you an go Orioles them. fan growing up? No, no, I was a Yankee fan. Yankee fan. But we went to see the Orioles. The WTOP had some stuff where they would play. The Orioles would play basketball against against like maybe the maybe the 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 redskins oh like a charity a event? charity oh, event yeah cool. and when cal ripkin was there playing mm -hmm. basketball cal nobody remembers they always taught you do not throw like him he throws sidearm they that tell every whip. kid now like don't because they all try to emulate him they're like that's bad form don't do that uh they were good though when i was younger the orioles had a chance yeah. and they were like right in the 
did they win a title back then? 96, 97 is what you're thinking of when yeah. Alomar and Eddie Murray came back. They were really good, but Eddie they got Murray. knocked out. Yeah. Um, but they weren't. 83 was their year. 96, 97, they were good. That's how long they sucked in between. And then they weren't good again until, until like last, last year. year. Out yeah. of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Yeah, the O's were really good. Memorial Stadium was sucked. The and first that's time what, I've ever heard you hear that, Kirsten. <laughs> that came out. That's one of the greatest national anthems. It's it like, is. you know, I'll say, cause by the start, it's like, blight. What do they get to? Oh, oh say, can you see? And everybody goes, oh. oh so I taught like, my daughter wow, that. Yeah. It's so cool. I'll People do that at Yankee Stadium. People think it's disrespectful and shit. I'm like, no. Nah, it's adding nah, respect. It is. You're already right. singing the national anthem. Also, the song was written in that city. Yeah, Frederick, Maryland. No, Francis Scott Key wrote Francis it Scott at, at the, the Frederick Keys. Fort McHenry. Yeah. Wow, you're right. Fort McHenry. So fuck off. We can do whatever we want. That's what I'm saying. We made the song. How the hell is that? How the hell? Why don't we get some more respect? We need to do an all-star team of comics from Maryland. Me, you, Stav, I think Chappelle. He's, I think, yeah, Martin Lawrence. Martin Lawrence? Mm -hmm. uh, Matt Judah? Bolchron's Maryland. Full Josh charge. Nasser's Maryland. Nasser's We're going to forget somebody. For Fra sure. Francisco Ramos is Maryland. Right, really? Who else? Chappelle will probably be starter. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> There's, oh, uh, Lewis Black. Oh, yeah. Um, Pat Oswalt. He might be Virginia, but I feel like he's right there in that pocket. Yeah. There's a lot of really good talented, but we're missing someone who's going to be like, we're I'm from Maryland, somebody. you motherfucker. Well, one time we had we a finals at Hebrew Academy, and they were giving away a ticket to a Bullets game. Two tickets to a Bullets game. Mr. Marker set it up, the PE guy. And uh, me and Chaim Zakheim, an enterprising young youths, young Jewish youths, we were like, let's go to the game. And they were giving away. It was probably against the Bucks, I think, who were sucked at the time, long before they fucking went to Greece to recruit. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, on the way, we were like, oh, let's, let's go. It's like, well, I got two, you got two. Well, that means you have two extra ones. And then it hit us, like, let's scalp. And so every single person that came out of finals, because that's when they had like 5,000 people at a 25,000 right, seat, yeah. say, you know, the old cap center. And we're like, hey, are you going to go to that game? Are you using the ticket? Can we have them? If you're not using them, like, yeah, sure, I'm not going to go. Great. A couple people are like, I might go. It's like, fine, whatever. We got them all. Got 35 tickets. And we went out there. We fucking scalp tickets all day. Fuck yeah, you sell yeah. them all? Sell them all. Do you remember what Face you Face value or below. Get the we'll fuck. go below. They still have tickets available. We're undercutting them outside. Yeah, hell yeah. We got them for free. We made hundreds. That's actually not scalping. It's the opposite That's of That's true. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> that's just legal selling. You're actually. right. That's just, that's just, yeah, exactly. We were so Dude, worried we were getting trouble. I thought we got chased out of there, but that might be a false memory. <laughs> Diaz did that once at the store. The story goes, they would give out comics. Their store was struggling, the comedy store. And they were like, hey, tell you what, if you come in contact with anybody and you mention the comedy store, here's two free tickets to anybody. We'll get them in. We'll get drinks off them. Put your initials on them, and then we'll give you $2 if one of your initials tickets come back. Mm -hmm. You know, just if you're out at where you worked at, uh, you know, at the Beverly Center or mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, Highland, Highland, anywhere, just like give them out to people. We're playing golf, so we give them out. They come back, $2. Why not? And Diaz just got his idea. He was like, sweet. So there was a line to get in on a Saturday night. He goes, don't pay. Here. Don't pay. Here. Don't pay. Here. So they'd lose $20 each. <laughs> and he'd get $2 each. Yeah, they'd lose $22 yeah. on each person. And then they're like, all right, we can't do this anymore. <laughs> Diaz exploits weaknesses in your security. Yes. <laughs> Dude, thank you for doing this. This was yeah, fun, buddy, This man. is a fun one. It this takes you back. One, yeah. This one takes you back. It's a good one, It yeah. gets you stories you never even thought of. Um, please plug and uh I got a new podcast myself, similar to this. The stories you don't think of. It's a travel podcast. One hour, one place, pretty much. It's called You Be Trippin'. <laughs> it's available anywhere to take you to some magical spots in the world um, for people that have been there. Not really tra travel, like what to do, but like what people got into while they were there. And it'll get you, get you wanting to get out yourself. And then I'm touring on the road. We're on side of history tours out now. I'll be in Australia, Denver, and Toronto, and all all over, all over from South Carolina all the way up to Toronto on a bus with Colm Terrell and somebody else. I gotta find somebody else. All right. Yeah. But this was great, man. It's Thank great to you, see bro. you again. You too, what man. What a good excuse to see a friend. That's nice of you. Thank you. Yeah. I know how you made a lot of uh travel arrangements to be here. Thank <laughs> you. Princess, <laughs> Stopped it for Princess three hours. Is all for you. Princess, let's see this trick. Can we do it? Do it, girl. Oh, you're getting a belly. Oh, give him a kiss, princess. Give him a kiss. Give Aria a kiss. Yeah, that's your nose. Like All right. 
Yeah. As always, Ryan Sickler on all your social media, RyanSickler.com. Come see me on tour. I'll talk to you all next week.